it works. No, no. Kind of suits your hat to be in there. That's sensational, man. Huh? That's incredible. That's old school. Oh yeah. Vi er, hvis Truls panner litt rundt her, så kanskje dere kjenner igjen disse her store greiene som lener seg over ferry nummer 1. Vi er på selve den hellige gralen den første discgolfbanen i hele verden. Og her, sammen med meg, så står en av de virkelig store legendene i discgolfhistorien. Vi står her med PDJ nummer 3, Dan Stork Roddick. Og kan du fortelle oss, var du rundt her, når disse første holes ble satt i grunnen? Ja. I fakt... I'll I'll send you a graphic of the LA Times article okay. of the first tee-offs, and uh, when it was originally put in, and Ed Hedrick lived uh, number one, lived right up the street, and at the time I was living with him because I just started to work uh, as the head of the IFA, yeah. and so the initial layout was just poles because yeah. he hadn't yet figured out the chains. Uh, and we were transitioning from just trees to to chains, uh, but but that whole assembly had not been figured out. So in that first article, you can see us throwing just to the poles, yeah. which was the beginning of the transition toward the the targets. Yeah. Uh, and how many years ago is this? Uh, that would be, I think it's around 185 years. <laughs> oh no no wait it seems like it seems like that uh actually it was 1976 yeah was that and now we've reached year 2022 and you just met this whole group of uh, eight norwegians that's traveled all across the world just to be playing disc golf a couple of them is, are staying for two and a half months playing just disc golf in yes. America. Would you dream that something like that would happen when you started putting this basket in the ground? In the ground? Would I dream it? Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Did I think it? No. <laughs> no. I actually, when, when we started all of the different aspects, Ultimate, because somehow like Zelig, I was lucky enough to be part of the beginning of lots of them. Yeah. When we had the first Ultimate game, we thought Ultimate would be everywhere the next weekend. Yeah. You know, but, so, anyway, we're surprised. But, yes, we did imagine it. Um, one thing I wanted to say is that we're here standing on the first tee, and if we don't move, all of these golfers are probably going to kill us. Yeah. So, yeah. maybe we should move off and we, let them we, play, and then we'll rejoin. Yeah, we'll talk okay. some more on tee number two, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Can't wait. Who's going to tee off first? Dude, are you ready to tee off? Actually, the combination of the, the uphill, which is mainly metal, and then this very low overhang, it, you, you've got a fairly narrow, fairly narrow. Følges det Petter? Godt. Great! So tell me, how many rounds do you play per month nowadays? Um, these days, these days it's probably uh, about three a week. Prior to the pandemic, I I didn't play much recreational golf at all, but um, it got me through. 
I came back to disc golf and I've been playing obsessively, my wife says. <laughs> Kan du klara beskriva vad du känner här när du går runt här Petter? Bara ren lycka och frihet. Nej, helt sjukt. Ja, frihet. Frihet. Det, 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 det var bra att beskriva. Okay, now part of my general thing is I will buy you a milkshake if you make this. Okay. Okay. okay? okay. Milkshake. Oh! <laughs> Wow, I was scared because a milkshake is like... <laughs> I, I call those uh, the free OCPs. Because <laughs> a milkshake around here, a quality milkshake could be like nine dollars. Yeah, <laughs> there. So why is this no small thing? I remember one year at uh, the World Championship overall. Yeah? I was playing with a group that happened to be all Germans. And somehow I was ahead pretty easily after the first round. And I said, well, let's put beers on it for the second round. Oh, you should Bad have done mistake. that. Bad, Bad mistake. Bad mistake. I mean, they killed me. <laughs> they just killed me. Woo! <laughs> oh! Keep that 30% there. This is the original second hole. And the original pin placement, do you see this stone wall? The basket was just behind the stone wall. Par three. Yeah, okay, short one. Par three. <laughs> <laughs> like a jumper. Yes, I guess so now. But we were throwing night flyers. Oh, okay, yeah, you makes know, sense. So. What's your putter? I mean, I. Is that an arrow? Uh, no, this is a puppy. Oh, really? A puppy. Wow. The nice thing about it is that if you don't like your score, it also serves as an eraser. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so rare to say that I'm so much on the head, Knut. You're up, Dan. You will, you will love La Mirada. Yeah. You'll love La Mirada because there's there's nothing up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. There's so many shots on Oak Grove that are that the the pathway is is constrained. Who are you holding your wrists? Oh, uh, Bonapane Bonapane grip. Wow. And so the 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 goal is to keep the nose down. Yeah. Uh, which is always a struggle. Yeah. Oh my! Cut that. Oh, that's cut that. That's what's not There you go. Woo! A bit higher than I. That's a local route. Yeah. Over the limb. I've been here a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> now I know a modern player just, right. just throws the forehand, right? Okay, I'll try it. I'll be modern.
Yeah, you're good enough today. Uh, gotta let it work. <laughs> I'm trying to build that more into my game. Yeah. Uh, because I always threw roll curves. But when I look at uh, Mr. Sexton throw, I realize he makes it look so easy that I have to learn to throw the fourth. <laughs> Am I right in remembering that I've read that you won like a world championship where you won a car? Um, it was the American Flying Disc Open in 1974. Yeah. So it was before the world championship, yeah. before PDGA. Yeah. That was, was that like the first big prize win yes. that you could actually ever win? Yes. And it drew, it drew all of the good players in the world. 40 of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, what did you do with the car? Um, kept it for years. Drove out here to take on the, the IFA job. Uh, I had a brand new Mustang, I sold it. That shows how much confidence I had. <laughs> okay, this would be nice to make. I have three baskets in my backyard. There's no reason to miss this. Come on. Be high enough. Come on, be high enough! <laughs> we did just discuss being high enough. You and the disc? Yeah. 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 Trickster. Boy, it's all about being up here. Yeah. In this half. I charge myself a dollar for every low pot. <laughs> go, go, go. That's sweet. That is sweet. You love it. Love. You love it? I think so. Best uh, four round in 2022. often say hey you know you could be in Norway <laughs> you, know. you say that? yeah yeah well any, we, we change Scandinavian countries I mean sometimes we say yeah. okay not short lots of hyzer really pounded come on oh too much hyzer no that's not too bad get down ah not what I envisioned. <laughs> so, talk, talking about Norway, do you have any memories of uh, disc golf with Norwegians from earlier? Well, my, of course, my one and two favorite. Do you know Axel Finnerud? Yeah. Okay. So Axel, I, I know Axel and Sune best because they were the the overall players who came over most often. Uh, and so it's those guys really that I have the most uh, the most memories with. Great guys, so, yeah. so talented. Sune, jeez, I really think he could do any sport at at uh, elite level. Come on! <laughs> Let's go. That's a free Osipio. Wow. <laughs> I didn't realize you were so long. I thought I thought you were right here. Yeah. I normally don't, don't throw that far. For help. Yeah. So now, now I have to make this shorter one. Huh? <laughs> Gee, it's all at once it looks longer. Man, that's. Yeah. yeah. 
but it wasn't nearly as loud. Did you hear that? <laughs> it just kind of just whispered in. Why can't every day be like this? Playing new courses, playing incredible places in beautiful weather with good friends. It's awesome. Yep, this is our only chance to, to get all twos. Harris Hole. Uh, this is Paul. He was one of our legendary players here. He was originally a, uh, a, a horseshoe pitcher. Oh. And then he converted to disc golf and a tremendous putter. To, 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 yeah. A great guy. So we named the whole after him. That's great. That's a great thing. Oh! Fortunately, you're a fantastic putter. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that'll be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> go, go, go. Go, go, go. Sweet. What do you say? Ricky, well, the greatest putt I think I ever saw. Wysocki's looking straight into the wind about this far away. Flips the disc over and putts it pretty normally. And it just cruised as if it you couldn't tell it was upside down. It just cruised normally right into the chains. I mean, I just went, you know, not, not slow. Come on, not long. Maybe? Come on. Oh, woo! Nice right. Very, this is a legendary Norwegian hole. Really? This is the hole where Håkon Kveset used the, the guy in the electric uh, wheelchair. wheelchair. Oh, oh, really? He threw it in. He was standing on the parking lot and then hit, hit the cart or what it's called. And he threw it too far. He threw it out of bounds, but then he hit uh, like a electric wheelchair, electric wheelchair and oh, uh, it inbound and uh, <laughs> tapped in bird. <laughs> well, that guy's not here today. <laughs> Oh. Uh, my name is Juan. Oh yeah, um, but I wanted more reason. On Instagram. Yeah, cool. Love yeah. stuff. Thank you. Yeah. No, I saw the cameras. I'm like, I gotta say hi. Yeah. What was your name? You said Juan. J U A N. Yeah, Juan. Juan. Yeah. Let's see some aces then. Huh? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Ah, that'd be thing. I've got one. Boom! Uh, you know, electric wheelchair. Electric uh, wheelchair. Uh, in honor of that history. Just because I haven't done it yet. Roller? Well, <laughs> old Stingray. Got uh, any of those? Super symmetrical. Yeah. Uh, it's the heaviest disc in my bag, like one seven. Just because I haven't had a chance to throw it. Go, go, go. Stay up. Stay up. No! Oh, oh, so, uh, <laughs> so lactose, lactose he, he wasn't recording, don't worry. Oh, oh my. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's really wide. This? More like it. Or who might say? Okay, this is. Every throw is its own game. Every throw. And I hear some people actually add them all up. I, I'm, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, I can throw 70 bad shots in a round. And if one of them hits the basket from 30 meters, I'll just take that with me. That's why it's such a great game, really. Get what 
I said about close traffic. Yeah. This is terrible. Tight enough. High enough. Tight enough. High enough. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, slip. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But plenty wide and long. Make this in your sleeve. Yeah. Woo! That's not a terrible run. Right. That's okay. All right. So your nickname, uh, Dan? Yes. Tell me about it. Oh wow! It's a 15-minute story. Really? Yes. We have time for it. <laughs> if, if if you want. See? Wow. Kind of short version, the first ultimate game, uh, Rutgers versus Princeton, 103 years to the day from the first Rutgers-Princeton football game on the same piece of ground. We're playing, we're in the first half of it, uh, it's going really well, it's on asphalt so I'm getting a lot of floaters. I come out of the game and the crowd, and Thank you. After a bit, the crowd starts chanting, Stork, 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 Stork. And nobody had any idea. I'd never heard that name before. <laughs> and so I go back in and they go, Yay, it's the Stork. And I go, That must be me. I'm the Stork. Yeah. So anyway, we play. We win by two, just like they did in football. Um, there's lots of stories, unbelievable amount of coverage. New York Times, Sports Illustrated, Faces in the Crowd, everything. And I'm Stork in all of those in all this. Unbelievable. Two years later, Irv Kalb, the captain of Rutgers and I, are world freestyle champions and we're doing the Philadelphia 76ers halftime. So we do the halftime. We come off at the end and the, the promoters say, hey, that was great, guys. Uh, and Stork, I'm glad I'm from Rutgers and I, I brought you here. I said, oh, great, great. He says, do you know how you got your nickname? I said, well, the first ultimate game. No, but do you really know? I said, tell me. He says, well, I'm in a fraternity that was on the, on the street beside the field. And we were watching off of our balcony. And I saw you and I said to my brothers, that guy looks like a stork. Let's start a chant. <laughs> so we started a chant. I named you. I said, fair enough. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, uh, that's a way, left. that's a way, okay. wow, yeah that, that's the Paul McBeth line, yeah exactly. <laughs> The, the two meter rule is because of me. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Tell me. Because I, at, uh, at Octad, the first, one of the first golf tournaments on the East Coast, uh, we had laid out the rules and we were explaining them. And I said that if you were in a bush, that you had to put your foot up on where your, the disc was if you could, and then you played on and if you couldn't then it was a stroke. Just a second, I gotta put this in. Long enough. Come on. Uh, it's long enough. Uh, mm, that's beautiful. And so so Jim Palmieri, a friend of mine who's very short, said, that's not fair, that's not fair, because you're so tall. And so I said, okay, okay. We'll make it something standard. I'm two meters tall. We'll make it two meters. I'll always be there. If it's over my head, it's a stroke. If not, it's good. That's two meters. <laughs> oh, that's funny. 
so it's a it's a stork stork's length. Exactly. Yeah, you guys. See, I would never, I would never offer a milkshake for that butt. See. Uh, uh. <laughs> Two, two birdies on that hole. That would be a cup of, of lukewarm water, you know, <laughs> yeah. which is which is nice to have sometimes. Ooh. I don't want to waste any energy. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm very tall. Marino Rock. Wow. That's my choice. Too. Yeah. Ja. Det, jeg kjenner at det brenner på huden nå, ja, altså. Ja. Vi må sette noe solkrem på. Nei, det hyrer vi bare. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Why is there so hot? Flip that. What the? <laughs> it's Woo! Oh my god, what are you throwing? I think you're telling the team through sneak. Oh yeah. For the big man himself. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Tree has a story. Yeah. Every tree, every rock. <laughs> Actually, I, I just finished an article for PDGA where I talk about the fact that I have, the, I have every rock and tree on the course memorized. It's how I go to sleep at night, is imagining around. Oh, that, you know what? That's actually what I'm doing as well. Not, not the, the elements, but just uh, walking a course, you know? Uh huh. That's so cool to hear that you're doing, <laughs> doing the same thing. But, well, the, but the fact that you know where every rock is and every tree is... Well, it's, a, it's an article about creative visualization. And I was really struck watching the Winter Olympics. You, you know about the Winter Olympics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they're I memorizing think, the course. Aren't there some Norwegians in it, I think? I, <laughs> I, think, so. I think we're taking half the medals there, yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's just so interesting to me to see them at the top of the hill. Yeah. Where they've got every move memorized. Yeah. And that visualization probably is more effective than actually going down the hill. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Okay, I'll go, I'll go milkshake for eight. Oh, okay. That's I a mean, deal. why not? Same to you. Back. Yeah, it's nine dollars. I mean, I'm retired, fixed income now. That's work. Wow. It's so hard to milkshake, burger, and fries for skippies. Yeah. <laughs> he see, he was going for the skip. He's a burger guy. <laughs> <laughs> throws its own game. Lera! Wow, cool. Do you have a did you have a story about the falling putt you said? Oh right. Um in seventy four the AFGO to win the car, the, the targets were ground baskets. 
that were a low box that was about uh, this big. So uh, my long approach technique was, was this vertical putt. It bounced close and, and often stayed close, often went in. But when I was short, the rule at the time was you couldn't touch the ground in front of your lie until you released. And so on any questionable one, I pulled up my stork leg and basically fell on my face and dunked it. <laughs> the result was I was approaching a lot more effectively than most and putting and I'm, I mean, I think I win the event by 14 or something. Amazing. Uh, again, Victor and John Kirkland and better players than me. But anyway, at the end of the round, I said to Palmieri, hey, I'm covered with grass. I look like a rugby player. It's not going to be like this for the rest of the sport. Let's say that when you release within, I don't know, 10 meters, uh, you have to stay s still. That way, it's, it'd be ridiculous to fall down every time. Yeah. No falling pot. So that's the story behind that. That's it. Oh, wow. Wow. Huh. That's awesome. Boy, that gets out of there fast. Jeez. Okay, let's play it. Beautiful. Wow, love it. I think NASA saw you, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. And you get a lot of extra air miles that way too. I think it's wow. Wow, wow, wow. That milkshake would have tasted yeah, good. Wow, it's interesting how God treats people differently depending on if he likes them or not. <laughs> yeah. Yes! Right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Sweet birdie! <laughs> This is one of, the, one of the most memorable ones uh, from YouTube. Yeah, we're playing a snugger. That's par four. So. Oh, not so tight, Dan! Not the worst spot. No, no. Kind of suits your hat to be in there. That's sensational, <laughs> man. The shot of the day. 
That's incredible. That's old school. Oh yeah. Well, the most interesting thing was that it was that it was really a, a cut roller, but I was counting on the hill to to keep it straight. Awesome. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Oh, too much. Oh, too much. Oh, my. <laughs> Okay, run. <laughs> yeah. completed uh, our round thank you so much for this incredibly special day that I'm, I think we'll always remember I think I speak on behalf of everyone here um, one last question I want to ask you though then is how what's the trick for keeping this golf fun for so many years and how, how do you keep keep playing you know, I think that's that's a really it's a really good question because as we think back there have been so many things that have surged in line skating. Um, that I mean even recreational tennis, you go to a tennis court here and there's hardly anybody there and where hacky sack, I mean it used to be that every place you went people were kicking. And all those things are great. That's that's the thing about it. Uh, I think for me, what has remained interesting in this is the continual personal challenge. Uh, I wrote an article recently about that during pandemic, I, I tried to tear my game down and relearn it with, with new information on the internet and with, with top players. And as you could see today, I'm far from done. but. My dad always used to say the fun is in the going. And I really do try to think of every shot as its own game and to play it uh, the best that I can. And my, my measure of how I do is how closely I'm able to replicate what I see in my mind's eye on the throw. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that, that is continually encouraging. Mm. And every time, now I've been playing since I was five, so I guess that's like almost 70 years, but every time I step to a shot, I'm eager to throw it. And um, for me, that's just an extraordinary thing and tells us that, that this, is, this is something special. Yeah. I truly hope that uh, us guys are going to play to play this golf together for uh, another 65, 70 years as well. From uh, the scorching hot sun in uh, in California, thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Hey, thanks for asking. It, it was a joy. I uh, hope to see you on the course again soon. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> in Norway. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that. <laughs> <laughs>